in the land of grills. Welcome back, folks. We're doing a review today of, this is brand new from RevTech. This is their RT380X. And folks, you read the description. They're saying this thing can get 1,000 degrees. 1,000 degrees? A pellet grill can get 1,000 degrees? Well, we're going to find out. We're going to, I'm going to walk you around this whole thing, show you all the specifics. They say the, the burn pot on this is turbocharged. Turbo, I guess that's how you would get up to uh, 1,000 degrees, right? So <laughs> let's, let's get going here. We're going to take a look at the price. Show you a little bit of what it took to put together. And of course, we're going to fire it up and see, does it really get to a thousand degrees? Let's find out. All right, a lot of things to look at here. They've had several variations of this grill through the years. It used to be very, very basic. And this is probably as advanced as you're going to get. And it's, I'll tell you what, and the price kind of reflects that. We're going to take a look at that too. It's got a front folding shelf. That comes standard with it. I like that. They've redone the stand on this. So there was always a lot of criticism that the stand was always a little bit light duty. This is definitely a lot more heavy duty than what it was. It is a circular shaped pellet grill. There isn't a whole lot of those around. There are a few others, uh, but the, this is the only one that says it can get to a thousand degrees. 18 pound on the capacity on the hopper. And if you're wondering, that circular size there is really similar to the same size of a Weber 22 inch. So let's keep on going around. I did add an extra temp gauge on there that goes up to a thousand degrees just to do some verification. We'll, we'll talk to you how we're going to do that. The, the lid is all stainless steel, as is the bowl stainless steel. It is hinged. We've got a cord wrap on this side. Uh, down there, that's actually your pellet dump. So this thing is kind of, when things are cooled down here, you've got that and you flip that up like this. And we'll show you on the inside, that dumps your ash into that. So pretty cool, you got a bottom shelf on there. You've got the, uh, you know, the Rectech has always been known for their PID controllers. This one actually connects with 5G. And I had it connected already and it actually, it actually worked. So uh, <laughs> I, was, I was impressed with that. Like I said, 18 pound hopper. You've got four nice wheels, two locking casters. Let's take a look at the inside. All right, on the inside, on the inside, you've got uh, stainless steel, three or four stainless steel cooking grate here. Uh, someone's gonna ask what the height is from your cooking grate when you've got the lid closed. And I used a tape measure for that and kept on going half inch increments till I hit the top and I had it standing on there, it was nine inches. So nine inches to the very top here. And it, it, it comes off a little bit. So at the sides, it's probably, eight inches. So you got plenty of height there. You definitely could do some low and slow on there. Uh, low on this grill, by the way, uh, per the manual is 200. Um, and high is, like I said, they, I'll show you. It says 1,000. Let's uh, take the grade off and take a look at right, so underneath. You're wondering, this is your RTD probe. probe. Uh, that's right at, at, at the grill grade height. So good idea there. Now, this is uh, one of the bigger improvements they've done. In the past, this has been steel, uh, their flame deflector. But this now is cast iron. So you can, uh, someone's gonna ask, where does the grease go when you do that? So if I were doing low and slow, I'd flip it over like this, and I'd put like a pan on there, a disposable pan in there to collect any grease. Uh, I wouldn't want the, my grease to get down there. Let's uh, keep on going. All right, so there's your burn pot. Uh, they actually say that it is, uh, it's got an afterburner in it, that's right. And uh, you, you can't even see the hot rod. The hot rod is kind of tucked inside. I'm curious how that's gonna work. And I don't know if you can see the auger's right there. And if you're wondering, uh, just keep on watching. I'll show you how that ash dump works. So that's stainless steel right there. And it's saying you let things cool down. And then you turn that, it dumps the ash into this right here. So a different way of doing it. And uh, I can't wait to test right, it. So let's take a look at some of the other, other specifics. You're seeing 22 by 22. Uh, cooking space is 380 square inches. Hopper's 18 pounds, like I told you. There is a two year warranty with this thing. If you were, someone's gonna ask if there's a pellet dump in, uh, there is not, but there's your specifications, 41 by 38. Total weight is 70 pounds. Total depth is 30 inches. Uh, I'll tell you, oh, oh you yeah, know, yeah, the most important part, Tom, what'd you pay for this thing? Yeah, this was uh, a birthday present to me. <laughs> 800 bucks, 1000 degrees though, folks, 800 bucks. Oh, I'll tell you what, let's, what's left to do? Let's fire it up. First fire right there. Uh, put things back together. It's, uh, it defaults to 350 when you start it off. We're gonna let, let it do 350, see how the flame's doing, all the heat's doing in there, and then we'll uh, pump it up and see if we can get 1,000 degrees. We'll talk more about that, because there are just some disclaimers, but let me give you a setup here and how we're gonna take a look at it. If you watch my channel, Tom Horseman on YouTube, you know I like to use these pucks, and I'll put them around there and they'll show us what the temps, but these pucks only go up to 650, and that's that's good for most pellet grills, but this one says 1,000. So I've just got some quarter inch, uh, steel there that I cut 
and we're just going to use our thermal here the thermal goes up to 1022 it says yeah right there it says it goes focus it says it goes up to 1022 and we're just going to be able to shoot those plus we've got the probe from the Rectech, and we've got the probe on the side so let it go for that 350 give you a couple give you give you a look see in about a half an hour here see if it is at 350 and then uh then we'll go for broke folks <laughs> We'll go, we'll go for a thousand degrees. All right, so just about the three, 350. I, I will say one thing. Now, I've, I've had a Rectech before many years ago. Their portable pellet grill used to be called the Mini, and that was my first pellet grill. And I was impressed with their PID controller back then, and I'm, I'm impressed now. It did not overshoot. And uh, like I said, we just got up there. It When you set the temp, it sets in five degree increments, but the uh, temp gauge reads in one degree increments. And you can see we've got it set 350. It'll give me a notification. Um, the probe that I added is being uh, very generous to Rexec because it's saying that it is uh, just about 350. So I, I tell you what, things are uh, things are going pretty good. We're gonna give this. You're gonna say, Tom, why don't you shoot your little pieces of steel in there? No, no, no. We're gonna give this about 45 minutes, uh, and then we'll come out here. We'll shoot those, and then we'll fire things up the full and see can we get to a thousand degrees i mean that's the whole purpose of this video a thousand degree power grill Let, let's see if we can do it all right uh set at 350 it says it's reading 350 let's uh it's been about 45 minutes now gauge on the side is saying that eh, it's saying closer to 400 375 385 somewhere in there uh let's see what the uh get you up here a little bit higher a little bit closer and uh, let's shoot those targets and see what temps we got there. See how accurate this thing is. And we gotta get it on there. There it goes. So right there we're reading almost 400. That one is reading 372. That one is reading 386. That one is reading 392. All right, well that's interesting. Let's uh, tell you what. Now they talk about some disclaimers here, you know, you gotta be using hardwood pellets, which I am, I'm using b, &B hardwood pellets. Uh, and they're saying that, I'm just gonna, all right? Your girl's preheating, plus or minus 500, we'll let you know when it's ready. So we got a set, set point is, I want it full here, full. Your girl's preheating to 990. Okay, that's what I wanted. I wonder why it doesn't say a thousand. Huh, interesting. We'll give you a look, see when we get there. Well, in less than five minutes, we're already over 500 degrees. So right now it's over actually what some pillow grills can do. A lot of pillow grills have a high of like 450. Uh, this thing is still climbing. Let's see how high we can get it. I've never had a pillow grill that hot before. 837. Look at that. Holy smokes, look at the color that's happening to the stainless steel. That's uh, it's pretty cool. Keep on going here. This has not, you're saying how long did it take to get there from where it was set at 350? This is 10 minutes, folks. I mean, this is really impressive. Let's see how high, high is. All right, it, it was up to about 980. You now it's coming back down a little bit. Uh, I tell you what, folks, I never thought I'd see the day a pillow grill would get, I mean, look at the gauge on the side there would get that hot that is uh that's pretty gosh darn impressive we're gonna give this about five minutes maybe 10 and then uh we'll take uh take you along and we'll go on the inside and see what those steel pieces of quarter inch steel are reading all right so after about 15 minutes it, it went back down it's been stabilizing right around that 950 ish mark uh back and forth but i, I tell you what I, I consider that a win Anything above 900, I would have considered a win. You can see the temp gauge over there too uh, concurs, 950. Now, if you're, let's take a look at a couple things. Now, number one, you're gonna ask what about the lid? Now they put it, you can see, so that's not hot, but the lid itself, obviously you wouldn't wanna to touch it. It is in the 230s, 240s, depends where you put it. Definitely something you wanna keep the kids away from. Uh, someone's going to ask about pellet consumption. Now, I did not fill the pellet hopper all the way. I uh, only went probably three quarters. So you, you can see we're, we're uh, def definitely burns pellets as you would expect when you're uh, at nine, 
950 degrees. I mean, pellet grill, I've never seen that before in a pellet grill, unless you're having a grease fire. Let's, uh, let's take a look at the, those uh, targets on the inside and see what the temp is. See, our cast iron is actually glowing in the middle. That's impressive. So, nine, 20 there, 930. 920 there. So really close to 900 all over the place, folks. We're gonna shut down, I'll give you my final thoughts on this grill. All right, I'll have to talk to you in the final thoughts. Obviously you're looking at your, and someone was gonna ask, hey, can you fit whatever accessories on there that fits a 22 inch kettle? Yeah, you can. There's a rotisserie ring from a charcoal and uh, it fits on there perfectly. So you could spin some birds on here or whatever. Uh, I think that's uh, that's pretty cool. All right, I didn't dump the ash yet. I'm just assuming that's gonna, gonna work just fine. Uh, didn't blow a whole heck of a lot out. Pelt consumption wasn't high either. Uh, shutdown cycle well, was really cool. The fan shuts off at the end. Then it runs the auger for, I'm going to say, almost 10 seconds, pushing anything that's un, that was partially burnt in the auger tube out into the, into the uh, burn pot. Good idea there by Rectech. Well, let's finish this one up. All right, so final thoughts. Can I get to 1,000 degrees? Well, it got gosh darn close. 980 is what I saw the highest. And it's in the 40s all today, and it was raining out. And uh, I am using, in my opinion, good quality pellets. You can see, like the B&B &B stuff, that's your championship blend. That's cherry, pecan, and post oak. Uh, I think it's, I, I'm impressed. I really am. Uh, I guess you got to ask yourself the question, is 800 bucks worth 950 degrees? Because it got at the 980, but then it, it hovered and was holding 950, no problem. And we confirmed that uh, all the way around. So I can't wait to sear some steak on this. You know, uh, there's a lot of possibilities for this grill. And having the fact that you have a Pell grill that'll get a 950, that's that's impressive, folks. It really is. Check out RecTech. Uh, I'll leave the link down below to their website. No affiliation here with me and RecTech. Just uh, wanted this grill, and I thought you you would all like to know if there's a Pell grill out there capable of getting to 1,000 degrees. Tom Horseman at YouTube. Thumbs up. Leave a comment. What do you think? Is this worth 800 bucks? Thanks for watching, folks.